Good morning. Last week, Frick discussed should we have an SSB on our yacht. And what an overwhelming reaction from all our subscribers. All the ideas that was put forward and it was just amazing. Thank you so much, you guys. It, 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 we really appreciate everybody's input because we really learn as we go along. This week, I'm going to be addressing the big question, should we need or do we need a skipper's license to sail our, our catamaran? Okay, I'm just going to get one thing clear here. Um, we are newbies at this. Um, we're under no illusion that we're just going to get on the boat, hop on and sail into the sunset. We want to become as competent, as knowledgeable and as safe as what we possibly can. That's why we decided to enroll in courses. I will be doing a dayskeeper course and Frick will be doing a Yachtmaster offshore. Now the big question is through whom? It's very daunting when you start hitting the Googles and the internets and to see what, what is available out there. We're really going to be concentrating on RYA versus SAS. Now RYA is the Royal Yachting Association. It's a British national governing body for all forms of water sports including sailing. And SAS is just the South African version. Okay, South African laws and regulations Neither the RYA or any other qualification for that matter is acceptable by the South African authorities. The RYA syllabus concentrates more on um, tides, which is characteristic to the UK, where SAS focuses more on the weather. In South Africa, any sailing vessel over 29 foot has to have a COL, which is a certificate of listing. They have to have a COF, which is a certificate of fitment and then they have to have a COC, which is a Certificate of Competence, or commonly known as a Skipper's Ticket. And these documents have to be on board the whole time. Okay, should we wish to, which we're going to, sail in um, foreign waters, the SAS listing and the COF, the, the fitment, is no longer sufficient. Then we also have to register through SAMSA, another governing body, um, who will issue us also with a local general safety certificate. Without these documents, we won't be able to clear customs. Visiting yachts to South Africa has to go through the normal custom procedure, checking in, checking out, and then they also have to clear, get a clearance certificate when they leave, and they have to issue uh, flight plans as well. The RYA regulations. Now, interestingly enough, there is still no legal requirements in Britain that you have to have any certification whatsoever. Not an ICC, which is the International Certificate of Competence, or a RYA certificate, nothing is needed. When Having said that, they also mentioned that the insurance companies might want some form of qualification or some proof of the competency of the skipper. The exposure of the risk to them is quite high. The yachts are just getting more and more expensive, so they might, they might insist on a bit of qualification. I think South Africa is, is going through a bit of growing pains as far as this is concerned. They, they basically want to force us to do the SAS, go the SAS route, but um, they're quite a bit more expensive than RYA, but less than ASA. Um, they say it's for safety, and um, we really don't mind paying and learning, as we're not stupid to think that we don't need it. We will be sailing up and down our wild coasts um, to a a accumulate our miles in any way before we cross the oceans. Most South African schools offer both RYA and, and um, SAS courses, but when you do RYA, they basically um, they want to force you to pay for the SAS as well. It's a bit like milking the proverbial cow. The courses seem to be very similar across board from SAS to RYA to ASA. I guess it's up to you to decide which is necessary and needed according to your own abilities. Now the different courses available, um, the first one is Day Skipper. It's basically what it says, is a Day Skipper. You can sail from sunrise to sunset in local waters 
um, 50 nautical miles offshore. The other second one is local water skipper. It qualifies you to sail day and night in the local in your local waters. Your coastal skipper. You can skipper a sailboat on any coastal passage within 40 nautical miles off the coast by day and night. Yachtmaster offshore. You are qualified to sail a sailboat on any extended ocean passage. Then the Yachtmaster Ocean. Ah, oh, this is almost like a badge of honor, I think. And this basically indicates you do your, your ocean crosses and everything, but what in addition, it allows you to do celestial sailing. So in other words, you can sail with no instruments just by the sun, the moon, and the stars. Okay, requirements. Day skipper is 200 nautical miles. It is two night hours at watch and one night entry into your port. Your local skipper is 400 miles with eight night hours on watch and three night entries. Your coastal skipper is 800 miles with 24 hours on watch and then three passages of at least 16 nautical miles each. Your Yachtmaster Offshore is 2,500 miles that we're going to be doing up and down our coast and 48 hours at watch then three overnight passages of at least 100 nautical miles. Because of logistics, both Frick and I are landlocked, so it's difficult for us to get to all these training centers. So we tried and we did source an institution that offers an online theoretical course. Okay, now your course is the SAS. For those who do not want to, cannot afford to go to sailing school, they do examine people who selected to do the home study route. The syllabuses, sample chart work questions and sample oral questions are all available on their website. There's various options available and all their documentation can be downloaded from their site. So, and the practicals will then obviously they have to be done at one of the institutions. And you're looking at an average cost of about $4,000, so it's, it's, it's quite a pretty penny. But again, here yeah, I have to emphasize We've got absolutely no problem with paying. Um, we want to be competent, we want to be safe, we want to be knowledgeable before we set sail. Okay, American Sailing Academy. They have a free online course which is very, very, very basic. For example, left, right, starboard, port, that type of thing. And then they have a lot of bite-sized little videos that you can also look at. All the textbooks are available in either hard copy or ebook form and it can be bought on their website. You then have to go through one of their sailing schools for theory and practical. Cost varies from, from school and institution to, to institution, but we just learned from one of our subscribers when they sourced costing and everything from ASA, you're looking at $10,500. That's a lot of moolah. Okay, RYA. Frick and I opted to do our courses through RYA. We'll start with our online theoreticals and then when, once we're down in Cape Town we will do the practicals through an institution that came very highly recommended from a chap um, that Frick's been chatting to. Thanks John. It's Ocean Sailing Academy. Okay, I'll be doing the day skipper course. At the end of this course I will be able to skipper our yacht up and down our coast um, by day in both tidal and non-tidal waters. I can travel roughly about 20 nautical miles out and this is a day cruising license so there is technically no mile restriction. You can essentially go as far as you can in a day as long as you're back before sunset. So obviously the faster your boat is, the further you can go out. So the slower your boat is, I think you're going to hang around just outside the dock walls. The syllabus includes seamanship, introduction to chart work, tidal lights and streams, position fixing, course to steer, GPS, voyage and pilotage, safety, passage planning, collision regulations and passage making. It covers all aspects of um, boat handling, navigation, 
seamanship skills and all those things. Fripp will do, do the RYA Yatmaster Offshore course. It's a fast track course and it combines a condensed competent crew, day skipper, RYA Yatmaster Coastal Modules, RYA Yatmaster Coastal Exams, VHF and SRC Certificate, Ocean Sites and Oral Exams. The syllabus is about is the same as the day skipper and our cost there is approximately just over two thousand dollars. And then there's ASA, American Sailing Academy. They offer all the RYA syllabuses and courses as well. It's just the cost implication there is just so high. Okay, through all my research I kept on bumping into the ICC, International Certificate of Competence. It has become, apparently it's become quite co common for charter companies in the Mediterranean to request the ICC. Um, SIS, RYA also recommend people wishing to go cruising around Europe and the Met to have an AC, uh, ICC. Now what is an ICC, International Certificate of Competence? It is a certificate which is intended to provide evidence of competence when requested by officials in foreign countries. It is sometimes known as the International Certificate of Competence. The ICC is issued by a contracting government to Resolution 40. I will post the link to the Resolution 40. And it indicates that the certificate holder has demonstrated the level of competence required for the certificate to be issued. In other words, it is an assurance from one government to another that the certificate holder is su sufficiently competent to be driving a pleasure craft, despite not holding the visited country's national certificate. So, interesting reading. I will be posting links below where they expand or give more information regarding that. And then, just as another matter of interest, both SAS and RYA's minimum requirements to obtain an ICC is a day skipper, so it's, it's nothing hectic or serious. Okay then, ASA does not have an ICC, they have an IPC, which is the International Proficiency Certificate, but they also claim for people wanting to sell the med, they should opt to do the IPC, and I think their minimum requirements is a big be by cruising to um, an ASA membership to get your IPC. Okay, sorry, I had to move. Um, they were busy mowing the lawn and making yeah, yeah, yeah in your ears the whole time. Okay, bottom line, there is no legal requirement to get any qualific or to have any qualifications to sell your yacht. I think it's um, the skipper's responsibility to know his own abilities. Uh, all these certifications that you get, all these courses that you get, for sure it's going to equip you to know your environment, to know your boat, to know sailing, to know the marine environment. Although ICC also refers to chartering, um, worst case scenario, you need a day skipper license to get an ICC. The other thing is some insurance companies might question the skipper's ability. As I said previously, the exposure is just getting more and more and more. So they might insist on some form of experience, whether it being a qualification, a logbook, anything in, to, to substantiate their experience. So the real question seems to be about how competent you want to be before setting sail into the distance. As I said before, we want to be competent, we want to be efficient, we want to be safe. want to learn all we can and that is it for this week next week we are going to cover insuring your yacht bye okay now RYA regulations 
RYA regulations. Now, RYA regulations. RYA regulations.